Hello YouTubers and welcome to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. In this video I'll be putting Project Frankenstein clips through some DB tests against my SVS SB3000 and RHT 1205 subwoofers using the intro scene from the movie Doom. If you missed the last video, then let me fill you in. In part one of Project Clips, I purchased a new replacement driver from a Martin Logan Dynamo 700W subwoofer to replace the wimpy driver in my Klipsch R10SW. This new Martin Logan driver is light years ahead of the old Klipsch driver in every way and includes a double stack magnet assembly, vented pole piece, higher power handling, more excursion, and a stiffer cone. All of these improvements should dramatically improve the performance of this subwoofer over the original driver. The only problem is, this driver wasn't a drop-in fit. I spent about an hour with the Dremel tool modifying the original cabinet to get the new driver to fit. Although the process to modify the cabinet looks painful, it was actually quite easy to perform. Now that the new driver is installed, I'm ready to run some tests. So let the games begin! Before I start the test, let me explain the testing parameters that each subwoofer will be using. Each subwoofer will be tested using the intro scene from the movie Doom to see which one can generate the highest dB value without distorting. I will be using a free decibel meter app on my phone to record each subwoofer's dB value. I will be using my phone to perform the measurements from an approximate distance of 6.5 feet away from the subwoofer. I will run the test three times for each subwoofer and then use the average value from each of those tests to determine the final dB value. The only speakers that will be playing during this test will be the subwoofer. All other speakers will be turned off. The contenders for this test will be a factored original Klipsch R10SW, SVS SB3000, RHT 1205 and my Frankenstein Klipsch that has been fitted with a new driver from a Martin Logan Dynamo 700W subwoofer. Now let's go over the specs of each of the subwoofers in this test. The Klipsch R10SW has a ported box design and a 10 inch driver. The amplifier in the R10SW has a peak rating of 300 watts and can deliver 150 watts RMS. The RMS rating is how much power the amplifier can deliver continuously. This is also the cheapest subwoofer in this group with a base MSRP of $250. But as you probably already know, these subwoofers can be found on sale quite regularly. What I find most interesting about this test is that I'm comparing a subwoofer with a ported box design to more expensive subwoofers who use a sealed box design. If all other variables are equal, then a ported box design will have more output versus a sealed box design. So the Klipsch does have a little bit of an advantage in that regard. Obviously there is more to a subwoofer than just output, but for this test, that's all I care about. So please keep that in mind. The SVS SB3000 is the most expensive subwoofer in this group and has a base MSRP of $1099. For an extra $100, you can get the subwoofer in gloss black. I ordered my SB3000 in gloss black since my Sonus Faber speakers are also finished in gloss black and they match perfectly. This subwoofer features a sealed box design and is equipped with a 13 inch driver. The amplifier has a peak power rating of 2500 watts and can deliver 800 watts RMS. This subwoofer's permanent home is in this very room, so maybe having home field advantage will give it some benefit against the competition. The next subwoofer is the newest addition to my subwoofer collection, and it's a RHT 1205 V1 edition. RHT recently came out with a new V2 series of HT subwoofers and had their V1 series on sale for up to 40% off. So naturally, I just had to purchase one. This subwoofer set me back $449 on sale, but did have an original MSRP of $749. This subwoofer features a sealed box design and is equipped with a 12-inch driver. The amplifier on the HT1205 is rated at 500 watts RMS. Unfortunately, I couldn't find this amplifier's dynamic or peak value rating anywhere. If you know it, please post it down below. It would be much appreciated. I recently did a look inside video on this subwoofer and was very impressed with its construction. So I'm expecting this subwoofer will perform reasonably well in this test. And lastly, my Frankenstein Klipsch subwoofer. This is basically a Klipsch R10SW that has been modified to accept a new driver from a Martin Logan Dynamo 700W. This new driver is rated at 300 watts RMS and 700 watts peak but the limitations from the original Klipsch amplifier will prevent me from fully driving this subwoofer driver near its continuous rating. However, believe it or not, 
This Martin Logan driver must be really efficient design because the little Klipsch 150 watt amplifier seems to do an incredible job of driving it, so the result should be pretty interesting. Like I said earlier, I'll perform the test three times on each subwoofer and will take the average value from those three tests to determine its final value. I won't bore you with watching all three clips of me performing the tests on because I think that would be rather boring to watch. Also, I've already dialed in each of the subwoofers to find the maximum volume that they can take during this clip before they will distort. First up, the Klipsch R10SW. The Klipsch R10SW was able to achieve 71 decibels during this test. I ran the test three times and ended up with the same 71 decibels on all three tests. For a subwoofer that only cost $250, I don't think you can get much more value for your dollar than this little Klipsch. When compared to the higher end subs, the sound quality and definition from the bass notes were lacking a bit, but you really can't complain because this thing was only $200 on sale. That's tremendous value for money. Next up, the SVS SP3000. Wow, that's a huge difference in sound quality and chest pounding bass that you can feel when compared to the Klipsch R10SW. The SVS SP3000 was able to achieve 76 decibels during this test. I know it's hard to hear and experience all of the differences between these subwoofers when watching this from a computer screen, but let me tell you, the differences between the SVS and Klipsch are freaking ginormous and should be considering the cost difference. Next up, the Rel HT1205. Amazing! I can't believe I got this sub for only $449 because it performs almost as well as the SP3000. The bass punch and output is one notch below the SP3000, but the sound quality and definition of the bass notes were on par with it. During this test, the HT1205 was able to achieve 75 decibels, which is one decibel lower than the SP3000. At $749, the HT1205 is starting to look like quite the bargain if you're looking for SB3000 performance. I wonder how the HT1205 version 2 would perform in this test. Hmm. Alright, now for the moment I've been waiting for. Let's see if all that hard work I put into fitting this Martin Logan driver into my old Klipsch R10 SW cabinet will pay off.
Holy cow, what a difference compared to the old Clips driver. Simply put, everything took a gigantic leap forward in both sound quality and bass output. I can definitely feel the bass a lot more in my chest, and the sound quality of those bass notes has improved dramatically over the original driver. The original Clips driver was very monotone sounding and lacked definition, but this new Martin Logan driver has fixed all of that. However, I still have some tweaking to do with the rear port. I noticed during max output that the rear port can be a bit noisy, but at normal listening volumes it's not audible at all. Another observation I noticed is with the mounting feet on the cabinet. They are not doing a good job of decoupling the subwoofer from the floor because I heard a lot more objects rattling in my room than before. So I might make the investment on a set of SVS isolation feet to see if that improves things. I'll be doing a separate review video on my Frankenstein clips and we'll go over all of the benefits and problems that I had faced. So was it worth it spending a few hours of my time to modify the Klipsch cabinet so it would take the new Martin Logan driver? Absolutely. While my freaking Klipsch may not be perfect, it sure is leaps and bounds better than it was originally. During this test, my freaking Klipsch achieved 74 decibels, which is only 1 decibel behind the rel and 2 decibels behind the SVS. That's impressive. I think one of the reasons why my freaking Klipsch was able to hang with the rel and SVS is because it uses a ported box design, which allows for more output when all variables are equal versus a sealed box design. My wife found the original receipt for my Klipsch R10SW and I paid only $174.23 for this subwoofer at Best Buy back in 2017. And then I spent another $50 on a used Martin Logan driver, so I'm all in for about $225. Honestly, I couldn't be happier with this upgrade. I now have a nice sounding subwoofer that can even hang with some of the big boys. I think the next upgrade will be a set of SVS isolation feet, which should cut down on a lot of the rattling that was taking place during this test. Hopefully this video was entertaining to watch. I'm new at this YouTube thing and I'm doing this just for fun. If you have any comments or suggestions on how to improve these videos, please let me know by leaving a comment down below. See you next time and happy listening.